today we'll be inking up our wood block and this one has been inked before but if you've just if you're just proofing it for the first time after you've carved it you should remember to brush any scrap bits of uh, wood out from the low areas of the block so that they don't get mixed in with your ink the other thing to think about is if there are some areas where you've raised a burr through cutting where there's little bits of the wood sticking up it might be smart to sand it lightly with a little bit of like 150 grit sandpaper to get rid of those raised areas so that you're not, it's not interfering with the ink adhering to the plate. Remember to ink your block when it is not in your printing jig. You should have your printing jig off to the side somewhere, but don't use it when you're inking. I'm gonna put a little bit of newspaper underneath the block so that I don't get ink on my cutting mat. And we'll be using Akua printmaking inks for this project. You can also use tube inks that are oil-based or water-based. It really doesn't matter too much. But the goal is to have ink that has a little bit of a stiff body to it. So if it's too runny, the ink will get down into the low parts of your plate and you'll lose some of the detail of your image. I'm using a piece of mat board as a putty knife. Uh, you can also use a regular putty knife, but the nice thing about the mat board scraps is that you don't need to clean them up. You can just throw them in the trash when you're done. So I've spread a little bit of ink out. It's not very thick. You always wanna spread it a little bit before you start rolling through it or else you're gonna be splattering ink all over the place and it will be much more difficult to clean your roller. This roller is moderately soft. It's a little bit harder than the speedball brayers that you may have, but um, you don't want a brayer that's too hard because then it's hard to um, get the ink on all the surfaces. So I'm gonna start distributing the ink. I, when you get to the bottom of the ink, you need to lift it up and keep moving it. If you just keep going back and forth, the ink stays in the same spot on the roller each time and you're not really distributing it. So I'm going to try to keep my inking area fairly small. It only needs to be as wide and as tall as the length of the brayer. So you don't need to spread it out all over your tabletop. I'm using a cutting board that I found at Goodwill. It's kind of like a very hard glass. And um, you can also use the portable mat that you might get at the dollar store that's just like a cheap cutting mat. The idea is to have something that's waterproof and uh, not very textured. So there are a lot of surfaces that could work if you have a butcher tray, an old cookie tray, if you have a scrap piece of tempered glass, all of those things work great. I tend to like using a white surface. So even if I'm inking up on clear glass, I often will coat the backside of the inking slab with a piece of white shelf paper, contact paper. And that way, if you're mixing colored inks, you have a better idea of how that color will look on the white of the paper. Uh, rather than on clear glass. So that's another suggestion. All right, we've distributed the ink on the on the roller. And now we're going to start distributing it onto the block. I am thinking about which way to orient the roller so that I don't get very much ink down in the low areas of my block. In this part of the sky, I cut most of the marks horizontally. And so if I were to roll across it this way, every time I hit one of those low areas of the block, the roller may drop down into the low parts of the block there and ink it up accidentally. So I'm being strategic when I plan which way to roll across different areas of the plate. And to start with, I'm just using very light pressure. You don't want to over ink the plate or you'll lose some of your fine details. So the goal is, is to put a thin layer on the plate, thick enough that it prints as a nice black, but not so thick that you start to lose the details that are your finest cuts. On this part of the balloon, I'm gonna change direction that I'm rolling because more of the marks run vertically. So I wanna keep my brayer perpendicular to the majority of the marks to minimize how many times the roller drops down into the low areas of the block. So you might also think about inking when you're cutting your block because I intentionally leave some marks out here in these areas of the sky rather than cutting the block completely away there. I leave a few little strands of imagery that act like little bridges that the brayer can rest upon as I'm rolling the block up. 
and then you have less of a headache with trying to wipe ink away where it accidentally touched the plate. Okay. So I know it's hard for you to see how much ink I'm putting on here because the plate already was black before I started, but what I'm looking for is a little bit of sheen. So I'm going to see if I can catch some of that in the camera for you. So you can see the plate should be slightly shiny to make sure you've hit all the areas. Check the corners really carefully. They're the areas that we tend to under ink or forget to ink all the way to the edges. So once you're pretty happy that the plate has been completely inked from edge to edge, get rid of your newsprint and replace it with your printing jig. This jig has the registration pins already on it. If you don't have registration pins, you can also tape your printing paper to the jig using a piece of removable tape like artist tape. I've got a sheet of Canson My Tint heavyweight printmaking paper here. It's a fairly smooth surface and I've pre-hole punched, I'm going out of focus here. I've pre-hole punched it to match up with the um, two pins on my registration board. The middle pin will not be used. And I wanna try to hold the paper up off the plate so that only the pins are touching to start with. And then I'll once the pins are in the right spot, we will lower the paper down onto the block. So you don't wanna shift it around. It's also important that the block be snugged up into the corner of the jig. So these are the two raised areas of my jig. This part is all lower and um, I wanna make sure it's not gonna wiggle around in there. So make sure you've pressed it up toward the corner before you lower your paper down. So I'm just gonna gently roll the paper down. If you wanna protect the back of your print from getting dirty, I suggest using a piece of parchment paper or wax paper or anything that uh, reduces the friction between your baron or your um, wooden spoon, whatever you're using to print with. This is a, this is a bar in here that's a synthetic one. Uh, I think Dick Blick makes this one or Speedball, I guess. And um, the other thing to think about is where your block might be located underneath the paper. Since our blocks are pretty thick, as we get toward the edge of the block, there's a tendency for the wooden spoon to slip off the edge of the block and it can damage your paper, it can rip it in some cases, and it can create a crease. So you wanna be a little bit uh, gentle when you get to the edge of the block. And sometimes you can kind of feel where the edge of the block is. Other, another strategy is if you have a scrap piece of board that's the same thickness, as the board that you carved on, you can snug that up to the edge of the block and maybe you have a couple of scraps and that builds up the border to the same height so that you're less likely to slip off the edge of the block. But if you don't have that option, another idea is to create a template. So in this case, I just had a scrap piece of paper. This is just uh, a little bit heavier than drawing paper but it's been stained, it's just kind of a junky piece of paper. But I hole punched it and I drew exactly where the block is positioned on the jig. So you can use your measurements from the border of your jig to figure out exactly where that place is on the scrap of paper or you can feel through the paper to feel where your block is. And that way, even though we can't see through our printing paper, we have a good idea of where we need to be pressing. So there's no point in, in rubbing way out here since the block is not there but it does help us make sure that we hit all of the, the parts of the block. I'm printing on very heavyweight Western paper and even without this burnishing uh, template in the way, I still would not have been able to see through the paper to the back of my block. So I'm just trying to give an even pressure all over. I'm not trying to do a kiss print, which is where you use varying pressure in different parts of the design in order to make some parts darker than others. I'm just going for an all over black, nice clean print. But later on, I will show you how to have a little bit more finesse and um, control over how each area of the block prints by printing with more or less pressure. So this one, again, we're just doing the simplest version where you just press evenly hard over all the block. You wanna make sure that you're burnishing in a lot of different directions so that you don't get streaks on your image. You want it to 
have a lot of pressure on every part of the image. So as we go, we can kind of check our progress. Luckily, the paper is attached to the pins. So we can peek at it. And if it's not as dark as we like it, we can put it right back in the exact same spot because it's being secured by the registration pin. So we're kind of peeking at our progress and it looks pretty good. It's slightly lighter here. That could be from not putting quite enough ink on the block. Uh, so I'm gonna try pressing a little bit harder in these areas and the rest of it looks pretty dark. So just, just this bottom part is, uh, is more critical. So I won't bother with the, the little burnishing template, but I will kind of feel for where the edge of the block is so that I don't accidentally slip off that bottom side and crease my paper. You should be pressing really hard with this spoon. I usually uh, get to the point where my shoulder is kind of sore from pushing hard enough. If you don't, if you don't feel a little bit of muscle um, pain in your shoulder, uh, either you're in better shape than I am or else you may not be pressing as hard as you should be. So bear down, uh, you shouldn't hurt the block by pressing hard. Okay, I'm gonna check to see what we've got. That's still a little bit light here. I'm gonna try a little bit more pressure. The other thing is if you feel like there's one area that you need to press harder on, if you use the edge of the spoon instead of the flat part of the spoon, you'll be concentrating the pressure in a smaller surface area. And so you don't have to press quite as hard if you've got a real specific area that you're having trouble getting dark enough. So yeah, I don't know if that helped a lot, but it does seem to be a tiny bit darker. All right, I think that's sufficient. I'm gonna gently, uh, usually when you're taking the paper off, you wanna make sure you're not stretching the hole. So you wanna just ease your fingers under there and gently lift the paper. And then try not to let it slip around on the block as you're pulling it off the plate. But I think that looks pretty good. This block is actually part of a four color block print. This is the key block. So this is the most essential information. It's, a, it's more or less a contour study of the composition. But later on, I'll show you how we can use KISS printing to create more atmospheric perspective using less pressure in the distance and more pressure in the foreground to try to add more depth to the image. But for your first basic print, just print it full pressure and um, set it aside to dry. The ink will stay wet for quite a long time. So you wanna set it someplace where it won't get rubbed across. And if you're in a rush to speed up the drying of the ink, you can dust it really gently with a little bit of baby powder. I typically will put the baby powder or cornstarch in like a thin sock and just tie it up with a knot or with a rubber band and then just dust across it. So you don't wanna actually rub across the ink. You just wanna have the powder fall on the ink like snow and then really gently brush it off with a um, really soft paintbrush and, um, you know, or tap the back of the, the print to remove any excess dust. But that should be, make it dry much faster if you need to move to the next step of adding some color or if you wanna turn it in uh, and you need it to be dry. Those are some strategies for speeding up how fast the ink dries. But sometimes this kind of ink can take two weeks to dry. And as you add more and more layers of color, it makes it dry even slower. So use a thin layer amount of, a thin amount of ink, don't glob it on, and um, eventually it'll absorb into the paper and, and dry. But do treat it as something that will smear if, um, you know, don't don't slide things around on it. Try to try to protect that paper. 